Hey there! Wow, I just finished a movie and I just, I need to talk about this movie. This doesn't always happen to me. I'm not always one of those people that's like just profoundly affected by a movie that I watched. And in fact, I'm one of those people that watches like YouTube and TikTok a lot more than I watch movies and TV shows to the point where I legitimately don't remember the last time I went to the movies. It probably doesn't help that it's going to be like 50 bucks for two people to go at this point, but yeah, no, I digress. So I watched this movie because I am a spooky person, as most of you on my account probably know by now. I love spooky things. I love things like ghost hunting and stuff. And I love shows like Ghost Adventures. I know it's schlock. I know that at least 90 to 95 percent of what they find on Ghost Adventures is probably done in post. They probably just catch the guys getting paranoid because they're sleep deprived. They're probably hungry and thirsty and they're in pitch dark most of the time. That's going to kind of mess with your head. I'm very aware that when you're watching shows like that, they probably do actually legitimately get scared. I think that it's not always acting. I think sometimes they are legitimately afraid of something that they heard or saw. But I also think that a lot of it is in their head. It's probably old pipes or rats in the walls or something of these old buildings that they're in. And then the producer says, hey, that was an amazing reaction. Let's go ahead and add like a spooky sound effect to this and then we'll call it good for the TV show. I wouldn't be surprised if all of that is entirely correct. <laughs> but I like watching it because it's entertaining as fuck. Like, I don't know if you've watched Ghost Adventures, but it can be the most hilarious show on the planet sometimes. If you're like having a bad day or something and you're like, I need a little bit of like schadenfreude or something to get myself through this, definitely watch Ghost Adventures because I think especially like some of the guys that are like side characters, if you can call it that, like Aaron and stuff, I think they are the ones that get legitimately scared the most often. And then Zach just makes shit up. Like, he gets so over the top. Like, I understand that if you are trying to create a TV show and you want your audience to be legitimately scared by what they're seeing and you're trying to get them all riled up and you've been in a location for like 12 hours, because remember, it's not just the lockdown on these ghost uh, hunting shows. They are usually there early in the morning. They are filming their B-roll of the exterior of the building they're gonna be in that night. They are doing interviews with caretakers of the building or people that still work there if it's still something that is a business outside of ghost hunting. They're probably at these locations for like 12, 13 hour days. By that point, if you have gotten literally nothing after doing all that work, you're going to start getting a little spicy. You're going to start having a little bit of an attitude and you're probably going to start biting people's heads off. But the way Zach does it gets so fucking funny sometimes where he's just like, Ghost! Ghost! I dare you! I challenge you to come and scratch your name into my back! And you're just like, my dude, cool it. Like, the ghosts are probably like, this guy's a weirdo and just wandering off right now. Or they're sitting there with their ghost popcorn like, holy shit, guys, look at this loser. <laughs> you know? Like, I don't think that he's as badass as he seems to think he comes off. The reason I'm bringing that up is that's essentially what the movie Grave Encounters is. Grave Encounters, I was shocked to find out the budget for that entire movie, and it felt pretty long when you're watching it, not in a bad way, it's just like it keeps on going, and it gives you this warped sense of time. You can't really tell how much time has passed. You know it's been more than 24 hours for sure. They established that at the beginning of the film, but beyond that, it's nearly impossible to tell. They could have been there for four days. They could have been there for four months. It's very hard to say. And the beginning of this movie was great because they're pretty much just making fun of Ghost Adventures the entire time. <laughs> I know some people said shows like Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters. No, they're just making fun of Ghost Adventures. They even made the main guy kind of look like Zack. It was great. Now, I decided to go into this movie with absolutely no idea what it was about. I thought it would be more interesting that way. I'd heard people say the name before, but that's all I knew. And I was like, well, obviously Grave Encounters sounds like a horror movie. 
or a ghost movie of some kind. So that's pretty much all I knew. And beyond that, all over my TikTok FYP lately has been a lot of people who love horror movies saying, everyone needs to watch Grave Encounters. It's so good, it's so good. You have to watch Grave Encounters if you haven't. And I was like, okay, I'll bite. I'm a little bored this afternoon. Let's do that before I start working. And I was sucked in, like, wow, I was sucked in. Now, when the movie first started, I was a little apprehensive because as a rule, I generally don't like found footage movies, whether it's horror or adventure. I just don't like them for a couple of reasons. First reason is that, in my opinion, a majority of the time when you are watching a found footage movie, you just sit there going, this could have been just a regular movie that wasn't found footage. And it probably would have been even better if it was just a regular movie that wasn't found footage. Why did they make it found footage apart from just being able to be part of kind of a niche genre? And that always makes me kind of crazy because I'm like, if your found footage is going to take me out of the story, it wasn't worth filming it that way. Sometimes it's just it's too over the top and it doesn't feel organic. And the other reason that I tend to not like them is that I understand that if it's found footage, it's gonna be a little bit shaky cam and stuff because it's supposed to feel like someone is just holding up their phone or holding up a film camera and running or walking. So it's gonna bounce a little. That is totally understandable and forgivable. But sometimes the shaky cam gets so over the top in found footage movies that you legit can't even tell what's going on. You're like, yeah, people are screaming, but I can't see anything. Like. I'm not upset, I'm not scared, I'm not in the moment when all I see is boom, 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 and nothing is actually happening. Like, that's really annoying. <laughs> but as soon as I realized that Grave Encounters was doing found footage style because it's supposed to be a ghost adventures type show, I was like, okay, this makes perfect sense now. I will happily give this a shot. So what happens at the beginning of the movie is you've got this crew that, if I understand it correctly, they're a newer ghost hunting show. Like, they're still working on filming some of their episodes. I think at some point they said something about they've only filmed a few episodes so far. So very, very new production. So they're trying really hard to hook people in and make them want to keep coming back so they can get as big as stuff like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. Drink every time I say Ghost Adventures. So they already go into it with this not bad attitude, but this stressed and strained attitude because they've got something to prove. They're willing to do whatever it takes to get the footage that they think they need in order to hook people into their show and get the whatever production company they're working for to take them seriously. So you already see a little bit of this at the beginning when they're working on the interview process. So it's during the day and they're at this old building in Maryland and they're filming the outside of it and trying to talk to people. And it's so funny because like in the middle of his whole spiel about the history of the building and why it's so profoundly haunted. You have like a car going by and he gets really frustrated and is like, I'm not redoing that whole thing. I'm not redoing it. Just, just continue on where the car came in. He's just so annoyed. And then they go inside and they kind of blindside a lot of the employees of the building with like, oh, we're going to interview you now about this building. And you can see they're really taken off guard. They don't know if they're supposed to look at the camera or not. <laughs> Some of them are a little bit too chatty and stuff. And of course, we've got like the over the top medium who's just like, I sense that someone died here. <laughs> and it's so fucking funny. Like I said, anyone who watches Ghost Adventures knows exactly the people that they're making fun of with this movie. And I think it's amazing that the beginning of this film is a serious slow burn. A majority of, I'd say at least the first half of this movie is just their little Grave Encounters show being filmed. And I think that was the perfect idea for this movie because it gives you enough time to understand the character motivations and who's more patient, who's more stubborn and frustrated easily. And that all plays into how the rest of the movie goes. 
So they finally get to the point where it's lockdown time. And just like any other ghost show, you've got like a few of them that stay at base. Base is where like the people who are making sure that the cameras are working, the walkie talkies are working, that they got the footage they need, that the footage looks good, the sound editing is good. They don't really go on the hunt. They just kind of chill there and let them know like, hey, I didn't hear you react to this, but when you were walking through blah 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 hallway, hallway B or whatever, I actually saw an apparition. You might want to backtrack because it looked really good. And they just kind of give them idea feedback on where they should return to or if they should continue. So these guys are already like they're excited, but they're kind of tired come lockdown because they've been working all morning and getting all their interviews and stuff. And What's interesting is when they're kind of going through the halls trying to capture any kind of paranormal activity, you get even more of the character personalities. So the main guy, I can't remember their names because I'm literally fresh off watching this as I'm reviewing it, but the main guy that's basically the Zach Bagans of the group, you can tell his only motivation is fame and fortune. All he cares about is being sensational. All he cares about is looking the part and making things even more than they are. So they like, well, think that they heard a noise or something or something will spook them. And when the medium guy is trying to do his whole thing and call the spirits in so that they can catch them on audio or video, he's like telling him to shut up and stuff. And it's like, well, the dude may be actually helping you here for all you know, and he's not letting him speak. So you're like, he's kind of a dick. He's not like wholly abusive or anything, but you can tell he's just in it for kind of the wrong reasons. And then you've got, there's like a female cast member and a couple other dude ones, and all of them are in it for the fun and for the hunt. They're in it for the right reasons. So like the girl and this one guy who's basically the Aaron of the group, they're getting really into it at one point and they get really scared and it turns out it's like the girl's shadow. So like there's these lighthearted moments in the movie too that make them more human. And I really appreciated that, you know, humanization of these characters. So they're not just mindless people behind a camera. But then we get to the point where they need to start doing b-roll they're like okay we're not capturing anything like every time they think they hear something or see something they're like i swear i got that on camera but something goes wrong where they're like not noticing it when they play it back and stuff or they do notice it but they're like we need something a little more than that because people are going to just dismiss this as like a pipe making noise or something so they're like okay let's go get some b-roll so that there's things that look cool in between the shots so it's not just continuously filming somebody's face fair enough well the guy that goes out and starts getting the b-roll footage gets scared out of his fucking mind because there's one of those huge noises that anyone who's ghost hunted before knows. You get used to like, this is the house settling. This is the pipes making noise. This is, you know, the floorboards creaking. And then there's like profound noises where you're like, that can't be the house. That is something else entirely. It sounds like no kind of like organic noise that could have happened in this environment. He has one of those moments happen and then I believe a door slams shut or something and there's no open windows, there's no wind, there's no way that it could have happened. So he freaks out, everyone comes running and he is like, I kind of want out. This is a little too much for me. But of course, the Zach type guy is like, no, no, this is great. This is the kind of footage I want. This is what's going to put us on the map and make us famous. So through the maybe second half of the beginning of the movie, I'd say like maybe the first hour, hour and a half or so. I don't know how long it, the runtime actually is, but it feels like that. More and more creepy stuff starts happening and they are capturing all of it. Like basically we're watching this movie back like watching their lives because you see all the behind the scenes you see like their bloopers when they make mistakes and stuff and i'm glad they put that in because it feels more organic like this is a documentary or something of what happened to them so stuff starts happening that is so paranormal and so scary that it's pushing the other castmates to their limit they're like honestly we've gotten more than enough footage now we have enough that you know the producers are going to be happy. We want to go home. And no matter how much the other castmates are like, we want to go home. We want to get out of here. We're getting scared. 
the host will not let them leave. He's just like, no, fuck you. I'm going to get famous. And you're really frustrated by this guy. You're like, just let him leave. Like, how hard is this? You've definitely gotten what you need by now. So eventually he relents and he's like, fine, whatever. We'll go home. You can tell he's annoyed by them. And they can't get out. This is where the labyrinthine movie thing starts happening. Every time they think that they're heading back to a stairwell or they think they're heading back to an elevator or they think they're heading back to the lobby, suddenly they keep on like hitting the same door over and over again and it doesn't make sense. So they start getting paranoid. And as they're getting trapped, they're hearing more and more noises and it's starting to sound like some kind of animalistic growling sound, like something is breathing and hunting them and the girl starts like feeling stuff touching her back and everything and she's getting terrified and now they're all finally realizing like no this is definitely something in here and it is dangerous and it is trapping us and hunting us now so they all realize that the time of day it is it should be sunny outside there should be sunlight even if they can't find the door they're looking for, they should at least be able to find their way through the building more because it should. there's a lot of windows. It should be bright out. It's pitch black. You can even see like a street light out the window in the distance. And they're like, this doesn't make sense. Even at like 1.30 in the afternoon, it's still midnight looking outside. So they're like, we don't understand what's going on. Like time doesn't exist here. And that's something I love too because... So while they're watching like their watches, their cell phones for the time of day, you only hear that the first 24 hours that they are there. And the next day you notice all the male cast members, their beards like haven't grown in that much. And that just kind of further establishes time doesn't exist here. It will look like you've only been here for a few hours, but you could have been here for a month for all you know. And there's no way for you to track that besides looking at your phone. Something else I enjoyed was when they showed the phones, it's like an old Nokia brick. So there's that and the fact that they have walkie talkies, but they're very cheap walkie talkies because they're such a new production. And that was such a great way of establishing why they are not calling for help. So many times in horror movies, there's this trope of, well, you can't get out because you can't call like the police or anything. And you're like, why? And it's always like, my phone broke. And it gets so tired so fast. This makes more sense because anyone who was alive during the era where you had like really cheap $10 walkie talkies you got from like Kmart or Radio Shack and an old Nokia brick, you know, if that person was more than like a few feet away from you, it was going to sound like noise. Like it actually makes sense that you're like, okay, this probably was being filmed in like 2004 or something, you know, in the confines of the movie. So it makes sense why they do have tech, but they can't call each other. They can't even call each other on the walkie talkie if one of them is on the other side of the building because their range does not expand that far. So I love the fact that they actually made the rules of the world a little tropey, but in a way that made sense and wasn't tired and annoying. Something else that I enjoyed is whoever wrote this movie did a spectacular job with it because every time I had a question, a legitimate like, audience member question like oh if it's been more than 24 hours they're probably like gonna need to use the bathroom or they're gonna need to like eat food or something as soon as i thought that something about it would be established like i was sitting here after the scenes where they're like oh it's the middle of the afternoon and we're really tired we haven't slept in 20 hours and we don't understand why it's still like black outside we're scared and they all go to sleep as soon as that happened i was like well when they wake up if they hadn't slept for 20 hours and they went to sleep now for a nap they're going to be starving the next scene they're talking about how one of them wanted to get a sandwich and they go to the cooler and all of their food is completely rotten and moldy and inedible but interestingly enough the spirits leave their water alone and at first I wasn't sure why they wouldn't turn into like sewer sludge or something. I think it's because the spirits enjoy keeping you alive and tormenting you. They want you uncomfortable, but they don't want you to die unless it's by their hands because that isn't fun for them. Instantly killing you, there's no joy for them in that. And this is a great time to mention that the location that they are filming in is an old abandoned mental hospital where the patients were not treated well at all. Unfortunately, that kind of goes for most mental hospitals. Patients were treated as far less than human. 
And this is where my only criticism of this entire movie comes in. But it wasn't bad enough that it made the film unwatchable. Like, I would happily watch this movie again any day and it would still be just as enjoyable. So this movie was released in 2011. That's not that long ago, but in film time, it's a hundred years ago. So much technology in the film industry is developing so rapidly. It's kind of like computers and cell phones and stuff that in five years time, something is rendered obsolete and you need to go on to the next big thing now. Special effects work like this too. And the fact that again, this movie has a $120,000 budget. I have relatives who earn more than that in a year, <laughs> so that's a tiny, tiny budget to be making a horror movie on, especially a supernatural one. Something I love, a majority of the scares in this movie are practical. It's someone making a scary growling noise with their throat. It's people slamming doors. It's people rushing by the camera so you don't know if you saw something that was like a shadow figure or not. The only time... It shows its age is there is a point in the middle and end of the movie where they start showing the actual ghosts themselves. And that's where things kind of fall apart. So I love when they just find the first ghost and it's just some girl facing a wall. And they're just like, she looks, you know, lost or like a homeless person or something. Let's check on her and make sure she's okay. And she turns around and screams at them. That would have been kind of creepy because you'd be like, is this like some crazy drifter and she's going to like hurt them for real? Or is this a ghost? No, they had to do the weird thing that they do in like the show Supernatural where her face gets all long and distorted and you're like, oh, it's a ghost. The trouble with it is that one, the long face thing has been done so many times that it's almost comical at this point. And two, because of how small the budget for this film was and because of how old it is now, it aged in a way that's more funny than scary. <laughs> so you do get kind of ripped out of the moment as soon as you see their faces distort. I wish that one of three things happen. Either they never showed the ghosts at all. They just let you go through the entire movie hearing weird things, seeing doors closed, seeing like balls of light or something and never really knowing 100% whether they're being haunted or whether they're just terrified. Two, that they showed the ghost but they only show them from behind or they look like regular people rushing at you so you never really know. Is it people who are drifters who are just dwelling in this old abandoned hospital and they are like not mentally well so they could be dangerous and they might not be or that there's only like a singular ghost you see the entire time but you never see its face at all it's always like kind of in the shadows or it's always facing away from the camera or something because again there's a little bit of that i don't really 100 percent know what's going on here and it's kind of creeping me out really badly I understand to a point why they wanted to show them. I understand that they're establishing that a big core reason why people get trapped by the entities in this hospital in the movie is because the entities that are the strongest haunt are the doctors and they think everyone who comes into the hospital is a mentally ill patient. They think that whether you're alive or dead, you're mentally ill because that's what happened when they were alive. If you came through those doors, you needed your help and you weren't allowed to leave the hospital until they deemed you well enough. Which is a horrifying thought because you're like, well, what makes me well enough then? How am I going to get out of here? That is a scary establishment. So I understand like showing like some people in nurse's attire or something. All those decisions made sense in like the story and everything. I understand why they did some of this. I just, like I said, if they ever decided to remake it, if they made enough money off of it to remake it, I would definitely say maybe don't show the ghost just show what the ghosts are doing because the trouble is if you're going to do anything with cg like the crazy faces on the ghosts it's going to age a lot of people don't want to believe that they're like oh some cg is like perfect but trust me even things like avatar and thanos 
in 10 years time, we're going to be like, I thought that looked realistic. It looks ass now because it grows and changes so much over time. Technology is ever advancing. There's just not really a way to wiggle around that. But like I said, even though the CG has not aged super well, there's a couple reasons why it didn't bother me. One is I went in understanding this is a low budget movie and that kind of let me put that criticism to the wayside while I was watching it. I was like, yeah, I kind of figured something like that would happen. It's not a big deal. And two, the acting and everything happening in the scene itself was done so well with the actors that I was still having a good time. I was still having fun. Like, obviously, when you watch a movie like this, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because it's not real. It's not a real documentary. Like, we go in knowing this already. So if that kind of thing is going to just ruin the experience for you, I'd say just don't watch it at all because it does happen pretty frequently by the end of the movie. There are several apparitions that you see, you know, full body, and they end up getting the distorty, goofy face thing that happens. Sometimes, though, when you see them before their face distorts and they just have makeup on, they looked great. They did an amazing job with, like, the blood effects and stuff and the way that people get snatched by the ghosts. And spoilers for the end of the movie coming here, okay? So if you don't want that, leave the video now. But like I said, it is from 2011. People have had ample opportunity to see it by now. I love the way that the movie ends because... What happens is all of them are so terrified, they get permanently split up. You can still hear them screaming, but let's face it, we've been hearing screaming the entire movie, so there's no way for you to know whether or not the crew outside of the host is still alive or if it's the screams of their soul. We only see one character die on screen. The rest of them, it's like, holy shit, where did they go? Did they all get killed? Are they just permanently separated and terrified? What happened to them? Because the end of the film, all you see is the host of the show. And you know a ton of time has passed because he is starving so severely, he kills a rat and eats it raw and then just has a mental breakdown afterward, as I'm sure many people would. And then he ends up encountering some of the nurse ghosts. They deem him okay to leave and allowed to go home now. And that is when his video cuts out. You just hear him say that they said that he's all better now and he's allowed to go home. Did everyone else get to leave or are they trapped in the hospital forever? I think it's fair to assume that the host does get to leave because not only did the ghost say that he was well enough, but we are seeing this video somehow like you as an audience member are kind of part of the cast you are the people who got a hold of his videos of that night and you're watching them back to see the horrors that befell this group of ghost hunters so he got out who knows what happened to him he's probably fucked for life now after all that but we don't know what happens to the rest of the crew and i think that's absolutely horrifying to think about you're like these poor people were just going in doing something that several people do for a living just having fun having a good time and they may have all died if they didn't die right away to the ghosts they're going to starve to death very soon or die of thirst because even though they had water bottles they're not going to last forever and that is just awful so i think that it ended absolutely perfectly. I also love the fact that even though at the beginning of the movie they kind of established that yeah we like found these tapes of that night and what happened to them was really scary and it's unlike anything that ever happened to a ghost hunting team before. They don't dwell on it like that is um, something with the Poughkeepsie tapes. I love that movie but sometimes you're pulled out of the horror because here's another interview, here's another person in the documentary and you're like oh my god shut up just get back to the scary shit. There's none of that. It's someone who's sitting there on camera at the very beginning saying this is why this film exists and that is all you see the rest of it is just the group. I do know there's a sequel. A lot of people absolutely hate it. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to watch that movie or not, but I will say that if you're kind of bored one afternoon, 
and you've got nothing to do and you just want to watch a movie that is fun it's not too overly horrifying it's just spooky good fun definitely watch grave encounters on a scale of five i would give it like a 4.5 because literally my only criticism is the cg and again that can get traced back to the budget there was nothing they could really do about that amazing movie had so much fun can't wait to watch it again and show it to people the only other thing I want to mention is, as a disabled viewer of this movie, the other thing that I loved that is kind of a behind the scenes thing is I normally can't see horror movies when they first premiere because so many of them over rely now on loud banging noises for jump scares, flashing lights, and animal abuse. And I'm very happy to say there was nothing that triggered any seizures in me so i was very happy about that like there's some light shaky cam but it's no worse than people's like vlogs on youtube and there was no like super bad flashing lights the only animal abuse was him killing the rat in the one scene and it's very very quick but it's one of those instances where it actually made sense in the context of the story it's showing how much time has passed it's showing that he's that desperate that he's starving now so I would prefer it not be in there, but it was quick and it did make sense for that scene. And there was no like sexual abuse or anything like that. Yay! I love that. I love the fact that this was a more accessible film for a lot of people with triggers. Thank fuck. And any of the loud noises, it wasn't a jump scare. I don't think I got jump scared even once. Like things had a decent amount of lead up throughout this movie that you knew if something was about to happen and it was loud like the whole time so you know and there was no music so there was no soundtrack to pull you out and make you think this isn't really found footage I just think it was well done but yeah that's my review for a movie all the way back from 2011 this is not the kind of content I usually have on my YouTube channel, but I'm having fun with this. So if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see again, you go ahead and let me know. If you have any like spooky movies for me to watch, you go ahead and let me know. Um, just know that my typical triggers are things like severe sexual abuse and animal stuff, especially dogs and cats. So I will always look at does a dog die. If that stuff happens on screen, I will not watch the movie. So don't expect me to, but until next time, I hope you have a good day. Do something nice for yourself as long as it hurts nobody else. And I will see everyone again soon.